Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the fourth presentation of our Qubit webinar series. And my name is Michael Kerwin. Uh, our fourth presentation is going to look at the new job coding functionality that has been added to the Qubit Pro software. Okay, so we'll start up again like before. Um, I'll make some time at the end of the session uh, just to go through any questions that you might have. So if you do have any questions in your GoToWebinar uh, dialog box on the right-hand side, there's a message box where you can type them in and I can go through them at the end there. Okay, so we'll begin now. So, as I say, one of the uh, new functions that have been added to the software, and it's actually come from a number of requests from our traditional BuildSoft global estimating users, and that's the ability to be able to code a job to create different formats or versions of your estimate. Uh, anyone familiar with the... Um, the global software, you'd be used to the names of Q and R coding or our job analysis as we are referring to. Okay, so these uh, these columns, you know, were traditionally used to sort of sort your estimate, maybe into by level or building, or maybe more so by trade package or accounting codes. So our development team obviously took our requests on board and over a number of years we've been getting feedback on that kind of functionality which we now added into the Qubit. So one of the main new features now is in the Qubit Pro version you can actually have up to 20 coding columns per estimate. And the, uh, the max in the, the old global software was six characters per code. That's now been expanded to 25 characters. So it makes it more usable with accounting codes that you might use in accounting software. Okay, so uh, how do you use the coding then within Qubit? On the job manager screen, there is actually a new section on the ribbon called grouping. Okay, where we have our group job functionality, but we also have our code section. Okay, and if we choose codes, this allows us to go in and set up, um, you know, a mixture of either quantity codes if we're analyzing the quants, or rates if we're analyzing the rate level. Okay, so if you wish to set up a code, you just literally give it a code and a description name. And then on the right hand side, you're able to set up your coding. So say if I was saying blocks, I could have like, you know, all I'm doing is typing it in saying block C. Okay, so you can sort of do it the same way as if I'm looking at the rates and I was looking at my cost codes, I could come across, I have two samples already set up there for concrete supply and labor. Maybe I add another one for, say, block work. Whatever it be, okay? You're able to choose what you need. You can have it either set up as alphanumeric, alphabetic, or just numeric. It's totally up to yourself. Yeah. Okay, so some examples you can see there is on my quant. I have the block ones, and I have an option of being able to the block, you know, sort fill up into those blocks if need be. You know, they could be areas, levels, whatever you need to. Same way as at the rate, the rates might be broken down by sort of cost codes. They could also be broken down by sort of, you know, a main section of codes if you need to. So you can see in the example there, I have a full breakdown of whatever I need. Okay, so you can take it to whatever level that you need to. You can also, down the bottom there, you'll notice that you've got an import and export. So you're able, if you've used the coding in, say, your global estimating software or your offsider system, you're able to export that as a CSV format and then import it in here for yourself as well. So if you have them done in your current setup, you're able to use them 
and you know we can transfer it through to your Cuba program if need be. Okay, so that's how you create your codes. How do you use them then within your program? Okay, so if I open up, say, that sample job. Okay, and that's just the job we use in one of the earlier versions of, uh, of the webinar series. So, you know, a new feature that you might have seen me using earlier on in another session was on the View tab. We now have these layout sections. Obviously, you can custom your own one, but one of the handy ones, if you're just looking at the estimate for coding or whatever, you know, if you don't require the viewport visible at that time, you can actually switch it to estimating view. You know, and that will switch your estimating and your calc and rate here, or you can actually click this little option and it will switch your calc and rate sheets down below there as before. So, you know, you're able to, you know, move them. That just makes it a little <coughs> easier for you to be able to see. Okay, so on the data tab, what we have now is we have a new section called codes, and there's two options. You've got manage, where it allows you actually to go in and see your code files and actually add to them what's in the job if need be. But you've also got the edit column. Okay, and what the edit column allows you to do is this is how you can actually turn on your code columns for the job. And as you can see, you get a choice of turning on quantity or array columns. So you can actually choose as many columns as need be. If you want more, you can choose them all as well. So what I'll do is I'll turn on the block option for the quant, and I'll actually turn on the cost codes for our rate level. Okay, so I hit OK then. What you'll notice is that will automatically add in those columns to the estimate level. Okay, let's move them around. If you want, you can move these codes anywhere you need to. So if you want them at the end, in between, you know, at the quantity, you know, if you want them at the rate level, you can actually move them anywhere you want in the software. They're not fixed. It's up to yourself where you put them. Now, what, another feature that's been added is in the old one, when you'd add it to the estimate, if you wanted to code, say, the calc or the rate level, you would actually have to automatically go into the calc level and add the column. The software automatically does it for you. So if you click on a quant there and it shows the calc sheet, you'll notice that the column for quantity is automatically added to it. Same with the rate. If I choose the rate column, you notice that on the rate level, it's automatically adding that to the sheet for ourselves. Okay, so if you want to use a code for a job, you know, you can either type it in. So either, you know, simply come along and say A, and you'll notice that as I start typing, it automatically calls up and filters our list. If I don't type and I double click, I get a full list there. And to use a column, you can either click on it and it will automatically insert it for you. So you can either type it in or you can actually double click to call up your list for yourself and then double click to insert as well. So you're up to yourself how you do it. You know, so I could actually call these rate levels. Say, you know, come on up. And say, this is brickwork. So all I'm doing is I'm just nominating a code against each item for yourself. Okay, now if you're using a rate level or a quantity level and you want the code on the sub-levels, literally click on the item and then on the rate sheet against the item, you'd actually just code the item you need. Okay, so if you want to assign an item to say multiple codes, you'll be coding that down on the rate level. Okay, so you know you can put that in as much as you need to. 
Okay, so all you do is you go through your bill, you know, assigning each item to a code as you need to. Okay, so when you're back then and you're ready and you finish your coding and you want to run a data sort on the job, how you do that is I would just close that job back to my job manager screen. Okay, that'll bring it back out here for me. And then back on the job manager grouping option, we have the option to group the job. So I'm able to group it based on a quant cell or a rate code. So if I choose the rate one, what it does is, first thing it does is it allows you to assign. So you could actually come along and say, well, which column do I want? So if you've inserted a uh, multiple rate codes, or as I say, you can now in the pro version have up to 20 different code columns on for any one estimate. You can choose the one you want to run the sort on. Okay, it'll ask you what would you like to call it. So I could call it, you know, just say Costco, that could be code a job, whatever it named name to be. And then you have actually a couple of criteria on how would you like to run the sort. Would you like to run it just on the item sheet level? Would you also like to look at the rate sheet level? And you can also have as all right, well, if I have codes on the rate sheet level, ignore them. If I've coded on the estimate, if you wish. And you've also got the ability of, say, transferring the calc and rate sheet or fill references with it if need be. So I'll just say rate sheet because we have analyzed our rate level. And I'll also take calc sheets for the calc transfer with the job. So to run the group, you very simply hit group. Now what you'll notice is a new job then is added in as part of our list based on the name we enter, which is cost code. But what it also does for you, and this is something we've been asked for, is you know, previously it would just create a new job on the job list and you're, you know, it could be you'd have to scroll down to find the one that it's linked to. Whereas now on the new one, it creates a mini project for the job, and it has your original job, and then also your sorted job. And if I open up the sorted job, and I'll just collapse all of it. So what you'll notice is on the main summary level, we get a breakdown of all the codes. So you can see that I've got a total for concrete supply of about 19,352 euro. And then we for labor, then we have about 4,700 block work the same. And then we get a list of any items that were uncoded. So, you know, if you enter the code that didn't exist in your code file, you get a new one saying incorrectly coded. So if I expand that down then, it actually gives me a breakdown. So you'll notice as I expand them down, Another feature that's been added that we've been asked for is we were only coding the items, but it automatically brings the headings with it. So if you've actually if you've actually got the heading, rather than have to code the headings like the previous software, it automatically brings them with each item for yourself. It's just a time saver there. Okay, so that's really just an idea of how it works for you. What I'll do is I'll open it up to any questions that you might have. So if you want to type in your question in the uh, message box, I'll go through them now.